Okay, here it is. Welcome to the Magnuson 5th Gen Toyota installation video. I'm going to walk you through every single step from uploading your computer and sending it to Magnuson to the last step. 294 steps to installing this Magnuson supercharger on a 5th Gen Toyota. And I'm going to show you every single one of them. Plus, how to put in a radiator and the air box. Now, I've never done this before, but I also never rebuilt a supercharger on a Land Cruiser until I made the video you're watching right now. This video covers 4Runners, FJ Cruisers, and other 5th Gen Toyotas. So if you want to learn how to do this, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. <laughs> So this video is assuming that you have a complete kit from Magnuson or a Magnuson dealer for your particular vehicle. Magnuson's instructions are amazing, but just to upload your ECU, there's 64 steps. And then there's 296 steps total to install the entire supercharger. There is no video that covers the entire installation soup to nuts. So that's what this series is going to do. I'm also going to show you a couple of tools that you'll probably want that'll make the job much easier. And I'm also going to show you how to change out your radiator for an aftermarket radiator, if you so desire, as well as modifying the airbox to work with the supercharger and a snorkel. So there is that. So let's get into this, shall we? With your Magnuson kit, the first thing you want to do is take the handheld unit. They supply you with the interface for your OBD2 port as well as the handheld unit right here and also the cable to hook up to your laptop. You'll need at least one USB connection on your laptop to do this. So in order to get your computer talking to the handheld device that Magnuson supplies you with, you're going to need something called My Genius Download. And I'm going to show you right now how to download that off the internet to your computer. Now you're going to type in the URL address shown on the screen and shown in your book. Type in that address and then download the app. And it's all in the book. Just follow the way it says it and then you'll see this pop up. When this pops up, click on proceed to this site and that will get your computer to start downloading. Now pay attention to the upper right hand corner your computer might try to block it so you'll have to allow it to download it takes a while to download but it gives you a wizard to help walk you right through it so it makes it pretty straightforward and easy but it does take a little while it's a lot of information follow all the prompts hit the next the next let it do its thing and then hit the finish button when it tells you to and it will give you an icon on your laptop or a shortcut so reboot your computer and then go back to your main computer window and hit the icon and open up My Genius Client. So you've rebooted. This is your main screen and you can see the little shortcut up there. Click on that and then once again it's going to start downloading. It takes quite a while to get My Genius Client up and running so you can actually plug the device in. We're still not there yet. So stick with it. Bear with it. Your computer may crash. Bring it back up and just keep following the prompts. Like I said, there's a lot of them, a lot more than I expected. And I'm pretty computer savvy. I can only imagine somebody that isn't looking at this, thinking they screwed something up along the way. You didn't, you're good. Just when you think it's all good, it starts downloading more 
and then asking you if you agree and this, that, and the other thing, and then it downloads some more, but it is what it is. You want 33% more horsepower, then download the app, but it takes this long, and this is sped up. This takes quite a while. This is what prompted me to include this portion in the supercharger install, because believe it or not, for most guys that swing wrenches and they can install superchargers, this is the part that would get them. Do you see what I'm saying? We're still not to the point where we actually plug the handheld device in to the computer as of yet. We're still downloading the original app that you're going to use twice in your life. Maybe four times if you've got two cars. I don't know. Okay, so you finally got My Genius Client to upload. The program is now on your computer. Every time you open it, it's going to update itself. But once you have it up and it looks like this, you're good to go. You're ready to grab your device. But make sure your truck is completely free of any engine lights. You don't want anything following up this transfer of information for your supercharger. Now you take the handheld device supplied by Magnuson and you take the supplied cable, plug it into the handheld device, and then simply take the other end and plug it into the USB port on your laptop or desktop computer. Easy peasy. And there you go. Once your device is plugged in, wait for Windows to recognize it and update it with the My Genius client software you just installed. You'll see the up update button right there at the bottom. Once again, make sure you have no engine lights, no lights, no warning lights at all before you plug this unit into your OBD2 port. Magnuson recommends putting this on a 12 volt trickle charge while you're doing this entire process. I did it, but it was such a fast process, I didn't need to do this. But they tell you to do it, so follow the steps. Why risk it? Now take the other cable supplied by Magnuson and plug it into your ODB2 port that will be located under your dashboard or wherever it's located on your truck. If you're installing a supercharger yourself, I would imagine you can find the ODB2 port yourself. Once you start this process, do not unplug the handheld device during reading or programming. Do not switch on any electrical devices. Just don't mess with anything. Follow the steps exactly you don't want to mess this up once you have it connected to the diagnostic port on your vehicle in the handheld device follow all the handheld device instructions shown on the screen it's very straightforward you really can't mess this up on the device's main menu select work during the next few steps you will be selecting your vehicle to identify the correct serial protocol an incorrect choice will not be detrimental to your vehicle, but will require the selection process to take place again. So take your time and do this slowly. Highlight Toyota and click Select on the handheld device. Now highlight if you have a 4Runner or an FJ Cruiser and click Select. Now you'll be prompted to pick what size engine you have. Select that. And then turn the ignition to on, but don't start the vehicle. And check your connections. The handheld will identify your ECU at this time. When it gets all the information it needs, it's going to prompt you to turn your key off. Do that, and then click OK. Once the correct serial protocol has been identified, select OK. The identification screen will display. Select ID. Once again, you'll be prompted to turn the key on, but don't start the vehicle, and then click OK. It's pretty easy. The device will begin to read the ECU at this time. It'll say, wait, starting communication. Again, turn the ignition key off and hit OK. After task successfully completed is displayed, select OK and unplug from the OBD2 port on your truck so now that you've got your truck's computer downloaded to the handheld device head back in the house open my genius download plug back into the usb port and click download from my genius and just follow the on-screen instructions to download the file you just extracted 
Make sure that the genius is plugged in and click next when it prompts you to. Now when it's done and it has the file, it's going to ask you where you want to store it. Make sure you can store it. I stored it in my downloads on my computer's hard drive so that you can retrieve it because you're going to be sending this to Magnuson. So make sure you can put it someplace that you can find it again. Ask your kids for help if you need it. I saved mine right here in my downloads so I could easily retrieve it and send it to Magnuson. So now, after you store the file from the handheld device from your truck onto your computer, head over to Magnuson's website. Once you get to Magnuson, superchargers.com, click on Superchargers and then select Toyota, followed by Forerunner or FJ Cruiser, depending on what you have. And in the drop down box, click on the 4.0 roller rocker product so once you find your way there there's going to be an entire list of questions asking about your vehicle obviously just fill them all out your email the handheld serial number for the uh, Magnuson device things like that pretty basic stuff I'm pretty sure you can muddle your way through it Now right here, you're going to want to click on Add File. Then you just open up the hard drive. From my computer, I'm going to Downloads. Just go to where you just stored the file from your computer. Copy it and paste it or just drag it and drop it right onto their website, right where it says to. Easy, good to go. There it is. Drag it over, drop it, and then send it off to the Wizards at Magnuson and wait for their email. They tell you that you'll, it's about 24 hours before you get a reply from them. They replied to me in 22 hours and they recommend that you don't start the install till you do this portion of it, which is why I'm covering this in a video. Just double check everything, dot the T's, cross the I's, etc., and then wait for your email from Magnuson. When you receive your email, they're going to give you an attachment, obviously, and that will be the new tuning profile for your truck with the supercharger. You take it over to My Genius software and click Upload to My Genius. Make sure you have your handheld device plugged in before you do that. Let it run its course. Let it upload it to your handheld device. Once it's done and all is well, click Next and then save the file. Always save the file. Okay, now you want to select the modified file, the one that says .myg that you saved to your desktop and click the open button shown. Once the file's been opened, click the next button shown with an arrow. Double check that the file name is correct and click the confirm button. Once you see procedure, completed successfully you can click the close the close button now you can disconnect the handheld from your pc and go upload this to your truck Okay, hang in there, fellas. The good part's coming. We're almost done with this computer crap. Go back out to your truck. 
plug it back into the OBD2 port once again, and then turn the key to on, but don't start the truck. And once again, make sure you hook a battery charger up to your battery because the truck's going to be in the on position for however long it takes. It was very quick on my truck. It only took about four minutes, but don't take any chances. You don't want to interrupt the upload of the tuning profile from Magnuson. That's the last thing you want to do. So once you hook up the handheld, it's going to you're going to get the main menu you're going to want to click the word work you'll see it right there then select writing from the protocol page choose the choose the file name you just uploaded to the handheld device and select ok switch on the dashboard when they prompt you to but don't turn on the engine and the handheld will start doing its job and just wait the ecu will be identified the file will be processed and it'll say file processing in progress right on the screen. And then writing preparation in progress will show up. The mod file will be loaded and you'll see it say ECU programming and it should say my GFI file 0.mod. Once again, it'll prompt you to switch off the dashboard to continue, then click OK. Once it's done writing to the ECU, the screen will say writing ECU completed, hit OK. Now the log will be analyzed and it'll say so and then click OK. And then you'll be returned to the main menu. And once you are, remove the handheld unit from the vehicle and return to your computer. Now you're going to send this back to Magnuson. Plug the USB port back in, obviously start up my genius client. Click on the file drop down button and select get log files from the drop down menu. Select the most recent log file from the list by placing a check mark in the select box and click OK. They all have timestamps on them so you can see what the most recent one is. Click on that and click OK. Now once again, select where you want to save this file, the one you just picked. An info window will display the location where your file was saved. Go to the location where you chose to save your file in the last step. Open this file. Now copy the most recent COMMXXIFO text file. XX could be anything, 020719, whatever. You'll figure it out or have one of your kids show you how to do it. Now paste this text into a new location like uh, Notepad or Microsoft Word or whatever. Make sure that the paper says ECU write. And then make sure that the result next to file opt is mod and the result is OK. Like I'm showing right here. Now if all of that is good to go, you're ready to install your supercharger. Now, based on the instruction books and the way that Magnuson has packaged this kit, they want you to be successful. The reason for this video is there's a few things that they miss and there's a few things that you need to know to make it a little easier. And that's why I'm doing this video series. Installing the supercharger and recording it is a pain in the butt. But I love this stuff and apparently you guys do as well. Part 2, actually beginning the install, soup to nuts, will be pinned in the description box below. You're going to want to watch all four parts of this because I'm going to cover absolutely everything, including special tools that you may need and upgrades that you may want to do while you're installing your supercharger. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it. I'm out.